Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're going to look at the Word 2016 exam and we're going to look at the domain called Insert and Format Graphic Elements. Overall this takes up about 20 to 25 percent of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at the domain. In this video we're going to cover Insert Graphic Elements, Format Graphic Elements, and Insert and Format Smart Art Graphics. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We are looking at the Word 2016 exam, and we're looking at the Insert and Format Graphic Elements domain, which is about 20 to 25% of the overall exam. This domain has three subdomains. The first one's called Insert Graphic Elements, and it tells us first that we need to be able to insert shapes. To do this, we want to go to the Insert tab here at the top. We're going to look in the Illustrations group, and we're going to look here at the Shapes. Now, there's a lot going on in the Shapes section. You should definitely be familiar with the group headings and some of the shapes that fall underneath all of those group headings. If it tells you to insert a star and you're not sure which one, if you just hover over the Shape icon, it'll tell you what it's called. So we'll go ahead and select this six-point star, and I'll just go ahead and click here. And notice it went ahead and inserted that. It gave me a shape fill and everything. It tells us not only do we need to be able to insert a shape, but we should be able to insert a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the insert tab here at the top. I'll insert a picture. You want to map to the folder where the picture is located. I'll go ahead and insert this picture that a student made of me. And notice that it placed that picture within this document. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to insert a screenshot or a screen clipping. Let's go back to the insert tab here. If we go to the screenshot section, we can click the drop down and it will allow us to take screenshots of folders and documents and windows that are open, or we can select screen clipping where we can create our own custom one based upon what we have shown on our screen. For this, I have a different Word document open, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select this. And notice it went ahead and put that in there for me. The last thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert text boxes. We wanna go back to the insert tab. We're gonna to go to the text group here, and what we want to do is select text box. There's quite a few built in ones that you can choose from, and it'll tell you the name of the text box if it wants you to choose one of those. Or we have the option to draw our text box. It'll give you a little drawing tool you can click and drag. For this, we'll go ahead and just select banded quote so you can see that. And notice it went ahead and put that text box in for us. The next subdomain is called format graphic elements. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to apply artistic effects. So let me go ahead and delete this text box and I'll go ahead and delete this shape and we'll just look at this screen clipping that we put in. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Anytime you select a picture or shape, you get special features at the top. For this, we have the picture tools format tab. We'll go ahead and select that because we wanna apply an artistic effect. To do that, we're gonna look here in the adjust groups and we're gonna click the artistic effects drop down, and we have quite a few to choose from. Maybe we want to apply this one called glass and notice it kind of gives it that glass look. Or maybe we want to do the glow edges and notice it kind of just changes that image just a little bit. We'll go ahead and select that just for fun. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to apply picture effects. So with that selected, we're still in the picture tools format tab and we're in the picture styles group this time. And we're just going to click here on the picture effects drop down and we can do things like add a glow to this and we can change the glow size, so we'll click that. You have picture borders. Something else you might be asked to do is to remove the picture background. Now, this image is a little bit different. I don't know how easy it's gonna to be to remove the background, but we'll go ahead and select remove background. Yeah, this one looks like it's gonna be difficult, but what we wanna do here is just select the mark areas to keep because so much has been removed, and we can just click around in here and notice that as I click, it gives me new sections. As you can see, I can click and drag and it's giving me more sections on the certification exam. If you're asked to do something like this, you're not going to have such a complicated image. And we'll go ahead and check this box. Keep changes and notice how different my image looks now. We'll go ahead and hit control Z just so that we can see our original image here. We're also told that we need to be able to format the objects now feel like this is a loaded section. There's a lot that you can do, such as apply things like picture borders, or maybe you need to do some alignment or rotation things. So like flip it 90 degrees. You could crop this. 
you could change the height instead of it being the 3.57. Maybe you want to make it four. Hit enter. And it adjusts the width at the same time. We'll go ahead and undo some of these things. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to apply a picture style. And then you have a bunch of those here. And you probably will be asked something like this on the exam. Maybe it tells you to put in the bevel perspective. So we can select that. I'm going to click this image and drag it over so you can see how it interacts with this text. Because there's some changes that we can make here. We can do this from layouts option button here, or we can do it from the arrange group and do wrap text. But we can change the settings from being inline to square or maybe tight. Top and bottom is a good one, which it kind of didn't make any changes. But or we could do in front of text and notice it just places that image in front of. But let's click square just so you can see it. Let's go ahead and pull this in so you can see how the text just kind of wraps around it. We're also told that we need to be able to position objects from here. We're in the arrange group and what we want to do is to select position here and we can do in line with text or you have the option of placing it in different sections within this document. So if it says position and bottom right with square text wrapping, we can do that by just clicking that. The final thing this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to add alternative text to images. You can also apply it to things like shapes, but with that selected, we're on the picture tools format tab and we're in the accessibility group and I'm going to go ahead and click alt text. Now this screen that I have is just a little bit different than what you're going to see on this certification exam only because I have word 365 open. I'll go ahead and throw a graphic up of what you'll see on the certification exam. That way you're not tripped up when you try to apply alternative text and it'll tell you in the instructions what to type. We're going to close out of this. And then as we're looking through this, just be aware of some of the other settings that maybe we didn't talk about, like maybe color corrections, soften or sharpen, maybe some brightness and contrast settings. Maybe it's a color here and we can recolor it. Maybe it's black and white or light gray. We can add a transparency. We can reset our picture so that it has none of those settings. And then I also want to look here at the size dialog box because there's a lot of information here as far as size, like absolute height versus relative. You can rotate the object. If it gives you percentages, you can do percentages instead of the inches that's up here. You can uncheck lock aspect ratio. For text wrapping, you have some of these settings that we talked about, but you can change the text wrapping settings here. You can also change distance from text. That's often an overlooked part of this. And then you have the position again. Be mindful of this dialog box. We'll go ahead and click cancel. The third domain is called insert and format smart art graphics. The first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to create a smart art graphic, and that's easy enough. Let me go ahead and put my cursor on this last page. I'm going to go to the insert tab here at the top. And in the illustrations group, I'm going to go ahead and click smart art. And there's a lot of things going on here. You should use this left side to kind of help guide you. So if it says like a relationship, you can click that. It should be able to help narrow down what you're looking for because these lists are pretty exhaustive. And it can get cumbersome to kind of look through and try and find what you want. So let's go ahead and just select this converging arrows. We'll click OK. And in this section, I'm going to go ahead and type in word. And now notice that I've just clicked in to the smart art graphic to do some typing. So I'll type in word for this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out this text pane here so you can see an alternative way to edit the text. We'll type in Excel for this one and we'll close out of that. And now we have word and Excel going at each other with our smart art selected. We have a lot of smart art tools that we can use, such as what's found in the design tab and the format tab. Some things that you want to be careful of when you're playing around with smart art. And I often see this, this individual element is selected and maybe it tells you to change the height to three and you hit enter and then it only makes the change to this arrow. And what they really wanted you to do is to change the entire smart art. So what you would want to do is just click on this outside edge and then change this from 3.5. Let's do five here just so you can see it and notice it apply that change to the entire smart art on the format tab. There's a lot of settings that we've looked at in other areas, but you should be familiar with this section. But let's look at the design tab because you could be asked to do things like add shapes and notice now I have a third one. So we'll go ahead and pop out this text pane again. And this time we'll type in PowerPoint and some things you could be asked to do is promote or demote. Now I'm going to use the tab here on my keyboard to push that over and notice that it became a sub point and it put it underneath Excel. If I didn't want that change, I could do shift tab to put it back. 
You also have the promote and demote here. We have the ability to move this up or down. And you want to be familiar with this section instead of just cutting and pasting in case there's something attached to this. That way it takes everything with it. We have some layouts here that we can change. Instead of the arrows coming at each other, we can change it to diverging arrows. And now they're all pointed out. You can change the color scheme. So maybe it says do the colorful accent colors. You can select that. And then something else you want to be familiar with is the smart art styles here. I'm going to go ahead and click the more button. So maybe it says to apply the powder 3D hover until you find what you need and then select it. And it went ahead and applied that smart art style to our smart art object. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.